Right, Ali, solid bags. I know it's a tactic you've used with great success over the years and you're fishing. How'd you get the best out of it and what are the sort of best scenarios for them? Um, you can't be using them in weed, Joe, because uh, a lot of my fishing in the past has been on really weedy lakes. And uh, any, anywhere where you think you've got deep sediment on the bottom or there's, there's silkweed and you want to be fishing with confidence. You know, the chod rig's like that now. Everyone uses it because it's like you cast it out, you know it's sitting pretty. Well, a solid bag achieves the same thing. And I think, unlike the chod rig, you're able to present a right little clump of bait around the hook link. You're able to fish something on the bottom as well rather than a pop-up. So it, it ticks a lot of boxes. And the great thing is, you know, if, you, if you're spotting as well, I often um, clip clip to a spot, so I felt the bottom, I'll then um, clip a little spot on, so no lead on the rig, just I'll put on like a mini skyliner for example, put a few spots to the, say the hole in the weed that I'm fishing, then bring it back in, put the lead on, put the rig on, put it into a solid bag, bang, straight in there, you know everything's landed in that hole in the weed, really tidy way of fishing. Definitely. Setting them up Joe, I mean they are a little bit more fiddly than funnel web bags you know so that there's no doubt but the effort's worthwhile a little trick that I do is um, have a little bucket like the one I've got here and by using the safe zone leaders Joe you've got the loop on the end of them yep so if you put a loop at the end of your main line you can have a few solid bags already made up with the rig and everything so you'd have say four or five rigs with solid bags on them say you caught a fish or you want to recast you just loop to loop off the safe zone leader and put a new one on Make the most of your time and Definitely. sit there knocking out some bags. On anywhere prolific, that's what I'd recommend. I mean, even if you're not using, um, you know, a safe zone leader, just something loop to loop, you know, as long as the lead can discharge safely, you know, like little, you could have a little boom, a boom of mono, for example, with a loop on the end and loop to loop that on. But you've got to ensure that that lead can pass over safely. I've got like a shock leader sleeve there. So I know if I had a mono leader with a loop on that, still going to come off. These are the sort of new solid bags that we've developed. Four sizes, you've got the extra small there with the, the little red marker on them. Extra small, yeah. You've got the small, medium, and the large. This little idea here, that just looks like a flat bit of plastic, doesn't it? Yeah. But if you follow the instructions and just pin it together, you're left with a very clever little bait, spook, uh, bait scoop. That was um, little Dovey's idea as well. Uh, there's a couple of little little key things I do. First thing, so we've got our bag here, ensure it's nice and you know not damp. With a boiling needle, all you have to do is go once through the bottom of the bag. Get that out. Now that's going to allow you, well basically in effect it gives you two holes on either side. Now you've got loads of options on the bait front with what you can do. The sky's the limit, you know, a lot of the liquids now won't dissolve a PVA bag. So you're able to put, you know, liquids in like the old activator and that sort of stuff. It all helps, you know, but I, I always say, you know, you can't beat a bit of simplicity either. I put a few cell boilies into a crusher. I just crumbled like four boilies up. If I put it in with a few pellets, that's a lovely carpet of fear. That's actually quite a lot there, you know, so I will always supplement it with some chopped boilies towards the end. Just You don't want to just create loads and loads of small feed because you can put a lot in a solid bag and keep them coming back for more. We shot a piece for Thinking Tackle last series at Yatley Match Lake with Gaz Ferrum and it was really hard. We're fishing all different things, couldn't get a bite and in the end I literally used a similar rig to what I'm going to put in here now. Um, the only difference to the halibut pellet and the corn tipper was I had a 10 mil boilie there and that was the only edible real heavy bit of food. The rest of the bag was just pure um, cell crumb. You rack your brains and then a little bag of that just cast tight to an island. That was all they wanted, you know, they didn't want food, they just wanted uh, something to pull them down. Um, so just to fill it, give me my bait scoop back, <laughs> right? I just, um, I like to put a little line in. They do feel really tough, these bags. They are mega durable. I mean, in testing, we gave them to like Mark Hutchinson. I, you know, I'd like to think I'm, I'm quite adept at using bags and I don't even tie them off, I'll show you in a bit. And I was whacking them as hard as I could. So a little bit at the bottom there, what that does, it enables the lead to have a little cushion point, it doesn't go out the bottom of the bag. But the important thing you'll notice as well, Joe, is most solid bags are sealed at the bottom, and these aren't, these are sealed at the sides, which is completely unique. The weakest point, which is also the most important point on a solid bag, has always been down here, so we've eliminated that. It's now the strongest point. That makes a hell of a lot of sense. Yeah, it does. Just start like that, and then with the bait scoop, just keep putting it in, loading it up like so. 
and every now and again I'll just I'll t I'll make sure it all goes around the lead evenly. Yeah. Yep. That ensures like steady flight. That's that's very important. You see, I've had the the hook bait hanging out there, and I'm just going to push him in now. I've got I've got the hair tied off of a bit of PVA, so it's not going to flick round and catch hold, masking the sort of presentation and messing up the the hair, so it's tangled around the hook. And then it's really easy now. I just hold the hold the leader like that. I've got nice easy access to just keep filling it up. I then just sort of tap it down like like that. Again, just hold it there. I get the bag nice and nice and open like so. Yeah. Yep. And then just wet my finger. Ugh, yeah. I can't believe you just licked your finger. I was eating sticklebacks a minute ago. <laughs> it's a major improvement. And then look, just fun there. Put it inside the bag and just pull up like that. Oh, you done it again. Yeah. How's <laughs> it taste? Lovely sell. <laughs> I'll just go all the way round. That's just damp enough. Then look, get it all there. That's a good just, little trick, isn't it? I yeah. like that. I'll just spin it round like that, Joe. And then do the same with the outside, like that. That tag end. Getting tongue involved now. Isn't yeah. <laughs> that tag end is lovely and neat. And you'll think, right, well, that's going to spin undone, right? It's not going to, it just holds, okay? And then to finish it off, all I do, tap the corners in, yeah? Yeah. Like that. You can go right, well, you can go this way or that way. And I like to, I like to actually um, sort of reinforce that centre bit. Like I say, in deep water and, and in the summer especially, yeah. when the water's warmer, it's, it's not worth taking it chancing it really is that's it, it. Yeah. so just that's the other wonderful thing about these bags they lick and stick so well you know one little touch on there and that's gripped and solid when you look at that it's absolute confidence in a bag and i've caught i mean when i lived up north i caught one of the greatest ever captures using them single scale a duck chuck into the weed at night after i'd been picked up by ducks, that's why I call it a duck chuck. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, that's the thing, you can chuck it out and it's fishing, you know, it is fishing for you. Yeah, basically what, what you end up with is it, it, it melts, it doesn't melt like funnel web where it goes bang, you know, even though it's compressed it, it's sort of like a little envelope that opens and these things just fall out, leaving a nice little carpet. And with that little bit of corn on top of the pellet, sometimes, Joe, in weed, if you want to slow the descent of it down, I would um, put a few nuggets of floating, um, dissolving foam in there. Yeah. And believe it or not... I was going to say, does that make a difference? does make a difference. <laughs> or, or, or cut a tiny bit off and just put it over the hook point. So if you're using, like, chop boilies in there and maybe some bigger baits that are likely to mask the hook point, a little bit of dissolving foam, just pushed onto the hook point, just enough to ensure that once it dissolves on the bottom, that hook that hook bait just rises up out of out of the other bait, and then the, the foam flicks off, and then it just sinks back down. Lovely. Bang where you want yeah, it. exactly. Just make a few little holes. This allows water to penetrate in when it hits the um, when it hits the bottom, and just ensures that that it breaks down nice and quickly. But a real brilliant carp catching method catches carp everywhere you go very difficult to get a little pile of bait like that right by your hook bait with any other method than this you know a spod's not going to do it you need a fair old bit of funnel web bag to compress that much bait in that streamline you're going to cast further than you can with a bare lead you know i know mark hutchinson can cast these over 200 yards it's ridiculous isn't it? yeah so to be able to fish with bait at that range comfortably even for mere mortals like me is, is a real edge. So give them a go, you really won't regret it. Confidence in a bag. Definitely.